So we've moved the transportation money, we've moved the water and wastewater money, and the next real phase is going to be our investments in energy, which will be in, across several major um, areas of spending, combined heat and power projects where we've already funded about $11 million in projects, biogas projects with about $5 million in awards, a solar, two rounds of solar funding uh, for a total, I believe, around $14 million, um, and an investments in, in wind energy of about $20 million, as well as yet to come, funding of green building improvements as well as geothermal improvements. So the next round for us between now and June is really going to be a lot of work in the energy area, and that's really now shifting us over to the investment side of the act. Not only does it stimulate the economy and stabilize the economy and create jobs to do these projects, but it now creates investments which will make us stronger when we come out of this recession. Companies will have changed over to more fuel efficient uh, methods of heating their facilities. Hospital, a lot of hospitals are looking at solar projects, combined heat and power projects. A lot of our agricultural community is looking at biogas projects. Um, so you're going to see a lot of, of those investments. And I'll leave the details on, on that for Secretary Hanger, who will be with you uh, for a couple of sessions, I believe, this afternoon. The other area that um, in energy, which you'll hear a lot about, is the weatherization program. About 250 some million dollars will come into Pennsylvania for increased weatherization projects. Probably about 34,000 homes is our goal to, uh, to weatherize through this program. Uh, we currently have um, about 358 homes complete. Uh, 1,485 are currently in progress working with 43 partner agencies throughout the Commonwealth. Um, and our production levels obviously have to start ticking up over the next several months uh, to meet our rather ambitious goals for not only September, where we hope to be about at the halfway point, uh, but then in the following year to be at that, uh, that, that targeted completion point. I'll watch my time, because I do want to leave you a little bit of time for some questions. What else comes next? Um, healthcare IT is one area that will um, be part of our the next major uh, initiatives out of the Commonwealth. Uh, we have our initial application developed. We've received our public comment on it. Um, and this is really an exciting initiative, which is designed to build the base uh, for us to have a world-class healthcare IT system interconnected throughout the Commonwealth. I tell people I'm very fortunate to, be, to live in the Lehigh Valley and be part of the Lehigh Valley Hospital Network System, where literally when I go see my doctor, she comes in the room, but also a laptop computer comes in the room. And uh, as we, were, we were talking yesterday at the commission meeting about, well, what does that all mean? And someone said, well, they're still going to order the tests. And I said, well, you know, actually, um, I was talking to someone after the meeting. I went in recently, and we were talking about some things. And she said, wait a minute, you just had that test six or eight months ago, we're not going to do that one again. And she knew that because of the system that was all tied in between all the doctors um, in that health care system. It was really a valuable tool. And the goal in Pennsylvania would be to expand that beyond some of the areas that already have it and to create the infrastructure and the investments to allow that to occur here. In the area of education, we will be next Tuesday, I believe it is, applying for, we hope, about a $400 million competitive grant from the Federal Department of Education called Race to the Top which is designed to make very strategic investments in school districts who have agreed to become our partner, who have signed an MOU and said, yes, we're going to make changes in our district. We're going to use this funding to make substantial changes in the way we educate our children. But we focused on, on districts that need our in turnaround status, uh, but also in districts who are not in turnaround status. And we anticipate there will probably be about a um, by the time we're done, over 100 districts participating with us in that race to the top. Uh, we were successful just this week in learning we were receiving funding for broadband. Uh, this is the very beginning phases of it, just to do the mapping across the state of about $1.7 million. Uh, but hopefully that will lead to even more. And of course, the broadband mapping and the development of broadband throughout the Commonwealth ties in very importantly with the Health IT initiative. Because we can't really ask a doctor in an area with no broadband to download an MRI that was done a year ago. Um, they may as well just sit and wait five weeks for the dial-up to download the MRI. So we have to make those investments. A little bit later today, I'm Lee McNulty, uh, who's part of our accountability office, will talk with you about, um, I'm sure, the accountability and transparency areas. Let me mention a couple of things. Um, first, our oversight commission. Um, about uh, two or three weeks after uh, the governor, we set up our initial structure here in Pennsylvania, the governor established an oversight commission to help with the accountability and transparency and the public input and the public understanding of what we're doing. 
Um, that commission is made up of all of the, uh, on the federal level, Senator Casey and Senator Specter have representatives, uh, members of the House and Democratic uh, caucuses, as well as the four caucuses here in Pennsylvania, as well as the United Way of Pennsylvania, the AFL-CIO of Pennsylvania, and the Pennsylvania Chamber of Commerce. As a matter of fact, Tony Ross is here today. He's a member of our Oversight Commission. Uh, Bill George is here today. He's uh, been in the last couple, our last couple of our meetings. Uh, might be missing. I don't think there's any other Oversight Commission members here today. But they've been a valuable tool for us in reporting monthly on our status, uh, asking a lot of tough questions, asking us to explain things, um, and uh, uh, being an important tool in this entire.